Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of CNC Base Camp. You know, plywood is a fantastic material to use for tables, for shelves, for furniture, for all sorts of things. But the plywood edges, I hate plywood edges. It looks ugly. They're okay for shop work, but for furniture, we gotta cover them up. So most tables and most uses for plywood end up being straight, and we can take edging that we've cut on the table saw, and it's pretty fast, it's pretty easy, but it's not very exciting. Your CNC machine can open up a whole new world for you, allowing you to make edging that's curved, that moves, that flows a little bit. So today on Basecamp, we are gonna make a small table, and it's gonna be in the shape of a flower, and the edging is going to move with the shape, move with the plywood, we're gonna cut it on our CNC machine. It's gonna be fun, so stick around. Before we get started cutting, let's go ahead and take a little tour of the project on the computer screen. So what you see here is the top of the table. Now I've purchased hairpin legs, so we'll get to those later. But let's take a look at the tabletop itself. So I'm going to flip it over here. We're looking at the underside now, and that is going to be a piece of half inch Baltic birch plywood. On top of the table, there's a center and six petals that are made out of quarter inch plywood. And quarter inch plywood is a fantastic resource when you want to use some different types of wood. Instead of having to deal with thin veneers or milling wood down to a thin thickness, just use quarter inch plywood. So we will be using our CNC machine to cut these six petals and this one center. Then we're going to glue them on top of our half inch Baltic birch plywood. We'll use a flush trim bit to size everything up, and from there we'll move on to solid wood edging, which is kind of what this show's about. And our CNC machine is going to make short work of that complicated shape. So with that, let's go to the CNC and get started. One of the requirements for this project was that it could be built using a small benchtop router like this one, because they're so popular. Now, this is a small format size, but we can still do some pretty big projects with it. It uses a standard one horsepower router. I have a pendant hooked up to it, just like the other Next Wave products use. Easy to operate, a lot of fun. So I've got a piece of walnut quarter inch plywood clamped to the table. I have a spoil board clamped underneath it to protect the aluminum top. So let's turn on the router and start cutting. Well, here you can see our completed center. And let me point out that I've added three tabs to help support the part in the parent stock. This was cut using a one quarter inch straight bit. All the plywood that I'm using for the center and for the pedals is an MDF core product. And a quarter inch straight bit like this works great. Now I have a piece of cherry in place here and we're gonna go ahead and cut our first petal. Well, here's the center and our six petals all cut out. So next step is I want to start by gluing the center down to our piece of half inch Baltic birch plywood and then sequentially I'll glue down all of these petals as well. One thing I'm going to use to help things out is I'm going to use this uh, pen nailer and I'm going to use just a couple pins to act as clamps to hold things down. So let's go ahead and get some glue and start putting this together. Now when using a pen nailer like this, I do want to align the width of the nail to the grain of the wood. And that way it's a little less obvious. But it only takes a couple and it makes things go pretty fast.
All right, now as we get to the last piece, it's either gonna fit perfectly, it's gonna be too large, or it's gonna be too small. Let's see what happens. All right, well, it's a little bit large. That's not a problem. So what I'm gonna do is just a little trimming off each side with a block plane until it fits snugly in place. All right, there we go. So all of our pedals and our center is in place now. What I need to do now is just let this dry and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna trim this piece of Baltic birch to the shape of our pedals. And I'm going to do that using a flush trim router bit. I'll begin by drilling a hole in the root of each of these pedals. And then I'll use a bandsaw to come in and cut off the majority of the waste coming to within about one eighth of an inch of our pedals. Once that's done, I can then use that flush trim router bit and get that final one eighth of an inch for a perfectly sized base to our pedals. So with that said, let's start using the CNC again and begin cutting the edging, which is going to go around our flower. Now, as you can see in the machine, I've already got one done. So each of these pieces has been laid out for three pieces of edging. And the pieces of edging mirror each other, and when they come together, they'll marry to each side of the pedal. Now creating the shape is surprisingly easy in a drawing program, and it's done using a tool called the offset, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and create 12 identical pieces of edging, get them cleaned up. I'm gonna deal with the plywood flower, getting it trimmed, and we'll be all set to assemble. Creating edging that has a complex shape for a project is not hard to do. Let's take a look at the screen here. This is our completed top for our flower table, and you can see the walnut edging around each of the petals. Let me go ahead and open up a petal, and I'll show you what we do. First off, I'm going to start a sketch. And I'm going to go ahead and project the geometry onto that sketch of our flower. And now I'm going to use a tool called the offset. You can see the offset allows me to pull the shape of the project into the interior, and I can also dimension that. So I know that the edging that I want is 3 eighths of an inch thick, so I'm gonna enter in 0.375. And that is the final size of the shape that we want. So there's a little bit of handiwork that needs to be done to isolate the shape and create the correct angles on the ends, but that gives us our starting point to go ahead and create the edging. And I'll go ahead and open that up and you can see. So this is my individual piece of edging. And from this, I can create the information I need for a DXF file, which I'll import into Vectric VCarve and with that, I can set up the toolpath to operate my CNC machine and cut all the edging I need for the project. Well, as you can see, I've got my flower all cut out. So it's a nice three quarters of an inch thick, solid, sturdy, ready for the edging. The edging is all separated from its parent stock and I took a little bit of time to sand out the tabs. So we're gonna go one by one, working our way along, gluing each of these on. I'm gonna use the pen nailer again to hold them in place. Now, things ought to fit perfectly, but hey, this is woodworking, and we know that's not going to happen. So each one of these is going to take a little bit of fussing. I went ahead and brought a small belt sander into the shop here, and that's a really handy tool for work like this. But so is a good file, a hand plane, a chisel, whatever works for you and what you have. So I'm going to finish up all my edging. I'm going to let it dry, 
I'll sand off the top, smooth things out, probably put it like an eighth inch round over top and bottom of the edging, and I think it'll be ready to head to the finish room and get some legs on it. Well, here's our completed top. I sanded things off, rounded over the edges with a 1 8 inch router bit, and shot everything with a few coats of lacquer. So now, it's time to put the legs on. These hairpin legs make for really fast and easy construction of tables and a lot of pieces of furniture. So they're a lot of fun. It's kind of an odd shape, so I'm just going to go ahead and eyeball these get them about even using my edging as a reference. That looks pretty good. Now I'll mark the holes. And there we go, our finished table. These hairpin legs come in a lot of different colors. I thought with the flower design, a green tone might be pretty and attractive. So, simple, straightforward project. We did it all with a small bench top router. And so think about what you can do using simple plywood pieces. And think about what you can do with all sorts of decorative solid wood edging. You're gonna use the offset tool in your drawing program. When you go to route these pieces, probably want to be a little light in the depth of cut and the speed to make sure that the router tracks well with these benchtop routers, so not quite as rigid as the larger machines. But it's easy and you can do a fairly large project with your small benchtop router. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's project. Plans are on our website. See you next month for another episode of CNC Basecamp. And one thing I wanted to talk to you about today is noise-induced hearing loss. Now, as we age, we all lose a little bit of hearing. In fact, everyone in here can hear a high-frequency pitch out coming out of the CNC machine. I can't. But one thing we can really avoid is the damage to our hearing that power machinery and power tools do. You know, it's, it's not just your shop tools. It's the lawnmower. It's the chainsaw. It's machinery. It's all those different things, and it all adds up over time. So we really have to be careful with our hearing throughout our lives. So I wanted to point out a couple of different options for hearing protection that we use here at the Woodsmith Shop. This is one that I kind of like, and these are a molded rubber plug. And they're nice because I can put them in and take them out very quickly and easily. They're on a cord so they don't get lost. When I'm at home mowing the lawn, this is kind of my hearing protection of choice because it's so simple. And as I said, I can just take them out and in and out very quickly and easily. Super simple to use. This style of hearing plug has a decibel reduction of about 27. That's pretty good. Another style of hearing protection are these little foam plugs. Once again, they come on a cord. These you have to roll up a little bit, insert them in your ear, and then they expand out. They work very well. A lot of people find these to be reasonably comfortable over a couple of hours. Any earplug is going to hurt a little bit over time, but these do a pretty good job. And I find if you get good quality plugs like these out of the molded rubber, they're not too bad. With the foam style earplugs, you get two or three uses and then it's time to replace them. These you can wash and get a couple usings out of. Now when I'm in the shop, I really prefer muffs. I just think that they're much much more comfortable. They've got this soft padding on them. They're easy to take on and off. And these particular ones have a rating of 31 decibels of reduction. And that's pretty good. You'll find most of the hearing uh, protection equipment runs about 23 to 31 decibels. Go for the high end. Get something a minimum of 27 decibels, preferably about 30. Now for me, we keep big boxes of these other style earplugs all around the shop, and I've got a box at home. I find I need about four pairs of these. It's kind of like 
six inch rulers, pencils, and measuring tapes. If I keep four around, I lose three, but I can generally find one because they don't do any good if you don't use them. So protect your hearing, get plenty of options, keep them around your garage and your shop, and over the long term, you'll be glad you did. <laughs>